Hey there YouTube lovers, my name is BB8 and today we are going to review Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the Indigo Disc. I could have saved this for, po for Pokemon Month in February, but really, I do have plans to bring back concept videos, so I thought it's better that we get the review out of the way now than never. So, without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? And just as a quick warning before we get into the review, this review does contain spoilers. So if you haven't played Pokemon Scarlet and Violet the Indigo Disc yet, I advise that you watch this at your own risk. Because I'm not taking responsibility if it's spoiled for you. And with that being said, Let's get into the review. For the gameplay, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's Indigo Disc DLC sees players traveling to the Blueberry Academy, a sister school of Paldea's Academy, depending on your version of the game. Players will participate as exchange students. The Blueberry Academy is an underwater school located in Unova's Ocean, which does intrigue me because I do think that the Blueberry Academy could be a location in the Unova remake, which I hope it is, because the Blueberry Academy does provide the best world building in Scarlet and Violet so far, and the features that come to my attention lie within the League Club room which is one of my favorite features in the game. The League Club Room is a room that can be accessed after defeating Kami. The only thing I really like I, about the Club Room is that you can make it uniquely yours by earning battle points by completing tasks around the terrarium. You can use them in the League Club Room computer for customization and it provides a variety of clubs that can help with customization. Think of the League Club Room as like the room requirement from Hogwarts Legacy, but without the ability to freely place furniture or access the variant. The clubs at the Blueberry Academy consist of an art club hosted by Philbert, who can remodel your club with eight different styles to choose from. Baseball club hosted by Mitch, where for 10 battle points, you can change your throwing style. The music club hosted by Allegro can provide a smart speaker for the club for only 50 battle points, which can allow players to set the background music to their liking. The Photography Club, hosted by Izo, can provide an upgrade to the Rotom phone camera, which can add more camera effects. And the Terrarium Club, which is hosted by Terry, which allows players to increase the variety of wild Pokemon that can appear in the Terrarium, which includes four different upgrades that add six starter Pokemon per biome. I like that wild starters are finally a thing in the Indigo Disc. Well, they were in Legends Arceus, but if you ignore Legends Arceus for a second, they're finally doing it in a mainline Pokemon game, which is actually making me really happy here, because wild starters is a thing I've always wanted in a Pokemon game. And this does prove that starters do not come from Pokeballs in the Professor's Labs. And I hope that Scarlet and Violet's Indigo Disc is not the only time that we get features like this. Because I do think there is a potential to expand on the concept, such as merging the idea with Ruby and Sapphire's dense system. That would be pretty cool. For the story, after being invited to the 
Blueberry Academy in the Innova region by director Cyrano. The player explores the terrarium, an underwater dome with distinct biomes and wild Pokemon. The Academy introduces the terrestrial phenomenon and the player discovers Kieran's drastic change, leading to the revelation of the Blueberry League. Despite being an exchange student, the player is granted the opportunity to challenge the Elite Four and ultimately defeat Kieran, becoming the new Blueberry League Champion. The story transitions to a journey in Area Zero, where the group along with Briar aims to find the legendary Pokemon Terrapagos within the Great Crater of Paldea. I thought the story set within the Blueberry Academy was alright, but honestly, the ending of the game is where it stands. Because in Area Zero, the player encounters the Stellar Terratype and discovers a dormant Terrapagos crystal, and Kieran, who is eager to catch it, unintentionally triggers Terrapagos' uncontrollable power after a fierce battle. Kieran joins forces with the player to subdue Terrapagos, leading to reconciliation and returning to the Blueberry Academy. The main story concludes. Post expedition, Briar publishes a book retelling the journey and the player receives a copy as a gift. And visiting the crystal pool in Kitakami, the player encounters Terrapagos, triggering the appearance of Professor Turo V. The professor, fascinated by the expedition details, trades the Briar book for their own before disappearing back through time and space. For the summary, the gameplay, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 because the gameplay does share a fair balance of exploration and combat and i do think the concept of synchronizing your pokemon in the indigo disc dlc is a bit weird but it's fun and if you really like the poke the poker park games from the nintendo wii you will definitely love this feature the graphics and the performance, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. The performance was alright, but it was a major holdback for me. But if Pokemon Scarlet and Violet does get ported to Nintendo's next console, I do think the performance could be a bit better. The world building, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Because the Indigo Disc provides the best world building we've had in Scarlet and Violet. And the world building element was handled quite well, because we have wild starters now, thanks to the Blueberry Academy. The story, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. The story within the Blueberry Academy itself was okay, but it's the epilogue story that got me, because it added more to the Paldean lore a bit. The characters, I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. And as for the new characters, Carmen was the most relatable. And the Elite Four in the Blueberry Academy was definitely better than the Elite Four in the base game because there was more challenge and each member had personality design-wise, especially Crispin and Drayton. For the new Pokemon, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. And despite half of the new Pokemon being Paradox Pokemon, I do think Archaludon, who evolved from Duraludon, is an interesting Pokemon. So is Hydrapple, who evolved from Diplin, who is the Kitakami form of Applin. For the content, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. Because the Indigo Disc does have a lot to do, such as the Blueberry League, the Terrarium, which you can explore, and the Blueberry Quest. 
even past starter Pokemon are catchable here too. Despite a lot of players complaining about the amount of grinding you need to do when it comes to Blueberry quests, I'm not complaining, because it does give me more to do. The music, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10, because the soundtrack is better than the base game, which in my opinion, lacked the energy from past Pokemon titles. But the Indigo Disc feels energetic again in terms of soundtrack. For the difficulty, I'm going to give it a hard. My one complaint with base Scarlet and Violet was the Elite Four being too easy. But the Indigo Disc makes up for that with a challenge. Which I'm happy with because it has the challenge that I come to expect from a Pokemon game because I did find myself constantly rematching Crispin until I ended up defeating him. And for the length, I'm going to give it eight and a half hours. Depending on the individual player's pacing, this may vary because the DLC is quite difficult. For the audience, I'm going to give it a six plus. There's no graphic violence in here. It's a Pokemon game after all and Pokemon games are designed to be family friendly, so don't expect any blood or gore or anything like that in a Pokemon game. Although there is cartoon violence. And for the perk, despite the base game not achieving this perk, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's Indigo Disc DLC actually does earn its collector pack because Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's Indigo Disc DLC is actually a rare scenario where an expansion can be better than the base game itself because the base game may have not had a battle facility like in past games but the Indigo Disc completely made up for that by introducing us to the Blueberry Academy and overall I give Pokemon Scarlet and Violet the Indigo Disc an 8.1 out of 10. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet the Indigo Disc was a pleasant surprise for me because I really was intrigued by the trailers. The DLC introduces features I've wanted in a Pokemon game for a long time such as the Wild Starters and features I didn't expect, like the Synchro Machine, which allows you to explore the world as a Pokemon, which is a feature I didn't expect to even be in the DLC at all, which does remind me a lot of the Poke Park games from the Wii, and I do think this is the closest we are going to get to spin-off games based on individual Pokemon. And now, What's my final opinion on Scarlet and Violet then, now that the DLC is all out? So, if you added my score, my review scores from the Teal Mask and the Indigo Disc to my verdict of Scarlet and Violet, my final score for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is a 7.8 out of 10, which I originally gave a 7.4 at launch. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet may not be the perfect Pokemon game because the performance does hold it back from being a true great, but the base game maybe have uninteresting characters, unenergizing music, and an awful adaptation of the Elite Four, but the DLC, despite the Teal Mask being lackluster, offers a lot. And I like the Indigo Desk more than the base game for a reason. So my opinion has officially been set for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. It almost earned its collector path, but didn't reach it. So guys, what did you think of my review for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the Indigo Desk? Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and turn your notification bell on so you don't miss another video like this one in the future. And I will see you all in a future video. 
BB-8 out.